Yeah, and the Second Amendment is very important to Montanans, and so is keeping families safe. You know, I was actually Attorney General and led the state's efforts uh, to have the Second Amendment recognized as an individual right. I think at that time, the senator was overselling software in China and other places. I've actually expanded our Second Amendment rights along the way. And I'm a hunter, and I'm a gun owner. And one of the happiest days I ever had was when my son first got his first buck. But to your exact point, John, that at some point, we have to look at this also as a public health issue. Are there things that we can do, like dig in a little bit along the way when it comes to research? Now, I think that ought to be a bipartisan issue. Look, I'll always stand up to Washington Democrats or others that might want to infringe upon our Second Amendment rights. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't be able to have a conversation. When a quarter of the times that I've lowered the flags at the president's request under both Trump and Obama have been for mass shootings, when our kids have to learn the first week where to go in case of an active shooter, we can protect our Second Amendment rights, but we can also have a conversation about how to keep everybody safer. I've never met a gun owner that doesn't want to both keep their family safe and make sure that guns don't end up in the wrong hands. We're going to open this topic up now so we can follow up on that and we'll begin that segment with Governor Bullock. The Second Amendment is about liberty. And I actually led the state's efforts while you were selling software in China and other places. Actually worked with law enforcement on a stand your ground law. Look, I've also worked with law enforcement when they said maybe we're going a little bit too far, like getting rid of all concealed carry, not even needing a permit. So I think we can actually do more to keep our communities safe and also respect the Second Amendment. Look, every time I've bought a gun, as an example, I've gone through that violent history background check. It's pretty darn quick. 80% of Montanans think that's a good idea to keep guns out of the wrong hand. But the senator won't even say that a universal background check would be good. If we can't even have a conversation about how we better keep communities safe, then I think we're really missing a lot of the opportunities here. Senator Daines. Well, first, I have to at least respond to what the governor said about software. Um, we weren't selling software in China. In fact, we were sell selling software and building a credible business there in Bozeman, Montana. I'm very proud. That's an insult to a thousand employees of an amazing Montana high-tech company. In fact, the Montana Democrat Party had to publicly apologize for similar kinds of lies that were told back in 2012 as it relates to what our company was doing here in terms of creating amazing, amazing high-wage jobs there in Bozeman. So let the record stand. What he just said that was absolutely false. Uh, but as it relates now to this issue of violence, um, it's very important that we continue to help our schools and our teachers in terms of their training and protecting the, uh, the perimeters of our schools. And, and thanks to so many great efforts by our school administrators and by our teachers, we've kept our schools much safer. And thanks to alert students who are reporting students that might be struggling with mental health issues and might do something irrational, that's where the focus needs to be, not on more gun control. Governor Bullock. From 2007 to 2012, the senator was the head of Asia Sales at Right Now Technology, selling call center and customer support software in China and all across Asia. Before that, what was he doing? Building manufacturing factories for a U.S. company in China. So the facts are, Senator, and I'm happy to walk through each one of those. Procter & Gamble? You built manufacturing factories at the same time that factories were closing in the U.S. Right now, technology, it did create a bunch of good jobs in Montana. Now, some of them have now been shipped off to Texas, but your job was actually to sell that software all through Asia, creating opportunities and jobs there. You've created more jobs in China than you ever have in Montana. Senator Dane's final word. <laughs> well, he just lied. Uh, we didn't sell our software in China. We kept it out of China. Uh, he'll need to go back and look at the facts on that. But I'm very proud of the fact we took a company and grew it there in Montana and created these high-wage jobs. And I tell you what, uh, I know there's all these dark money ads 
that Steve Bullock talks about, we shouldn't allow dark money in politics. It's these dark money ads that are telling these lies. Let me set the record straight. I was a young 20-something engineer from Montana State University that our mission there was to market and sell great American brands like Crest Toothpaste and Tide Laundry Detergent and Safeguard to beat Chinese companies. And we did. So we were marketing and selling. Not one box of that product we made was ever sent back to the United States. Not one job was outsourced. And so these are absolute lies, distortions of the truth. And uh, I'm just, uh, it's unfortunate he had to really uh, demean a great Montana company called Right Now Technologies who built these incredible jobs here in Montana, competing and beating Japanese companies, German companies, as well as many American companies made right here in Montana.